Sit down and buckle up. This is a long video exploring every aspect of taming in a more generalized format than I've done before. On the screen right now, we have a table of contents with timestamps to each part. I'll also put that table of contents down in the comments with clickable timestamps. With all that out of the way, my name's Techorsa, and let's get into the taming. First off, I'm going to talk about the different methods of preparing to knock creatures out. It must be said, however, that not every creature can be tamed by knockout. This list of creatures is small, and I encourage you to check out the link in the description for more detail. The first way is to immobilize the creature using tools specifically meant for this task. However, the tools aren't effective on all creatures, and most are meant to be temporary means of restraint. Regular bolas are crafted in your inventory with thatch, stone, fiber, and hide, and will immobilize small creatures for a maximum of 30 seconds, and you'll need to wait at least 10 seconds before another bola can take effect. Applying a bola too early after a previous one will not have any effect. Chain bolas are crafted in a smithy with metal ingots, cementing paste, and obsidian, and it can only be fired from a ballista, and it will immobilize larger creatures for 15 seconds, and you have to wait this duration to reapply it. As with the smaller bola, applying too early will not have any effect. Bear traps are crafted in a smithy with fiber, metal ingots, and hide. Bear traps must be deployed on the ground and can only immobilize small creatures. The amount of time a bear trap can hold a creature is 800 seconds. However, wild creatures can break out quicker than this. Large bear traps are crafted in a smithy using fiber, metal ingots, and hide. They must be deployed on the ground and can only immobilize large creatures. The amount of time a large bear trap can hold a creature is 800 seconds. However, wild creatures can break out quicker than this. Plant Species Y are a plant from scorched earth. You plant a seed in a large crop plot, and once mature you get plant species Y traps. These traps are placed on the ground and can trap most small and medium sized creatures for about 30 seconds. However, wild creatures may break out quicker than this. The second method is to build a trap. The most basic design for a trap is a box large enough to contain the creature out of material the creature can't break, with a ramp up one side and a door out the other. Windows at ground level are optional, but they do help you hit the creature trapped inside the box. For smaller creatures, a wood box that is 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three and two walls high should be good enough. For medium creatures, a stone box that is 3x3 three three and 2 or 3 tall should be just fine. For large creatures, you'll need a metal box that is at least 5x5, five five, but larger is better, with four or five walls tall. This should be large enough to contain most creatures. Thank you. 
Once you have your trap built, you'll want to get the attention of the creature you want to knock out, run up your ramp, and out the door on the opposite side. A trick that might be useful is that raptors can fit through a normal door frame if you have two stacked on top of each other, with no door in them. It will take practice to get through this, but the raptor will give you increased speed while luring the creature into the trap. That leads me into the third method of preparing to knock a creature out, mounts. This section is based around having a creature that you can fire from the back of that can either outrun or have enough health to survive the creature you're taming. I'll put a link in the description for a full list of creatures that you can use weapons while mounted. I'll also give you my list of favorite creatures. As I said before, raptors are quick and you can use weapons from their back, and they can fit through a double stacked door frame with no door, which is good for traps. Gallimimus are faster than the raptor, which gives them less of a chance of being hit while you're running away. They do have a bit of a larger hitbox, so they can't fit through a door frame like a raptor can. A third option for quick mounts is an Equus. The big advantage the Equus has is your ability to lasso creatures from their back. This makes them very useful for dragging tiny creatures to a safe spot to tame. Another factor to consider is health. Thylakaleo have a good health pool while still remaining mobile. You have the ability to get away if the tame starts to go south. Another tanky mount that is fairly good at surviving is the Deodon. The Deodon's secondary attack is a healing aura which is able to help your mount recover health while still taking hits. There are also several other mounts that you can use for their utility. Another would be the Mantis, for their ability to use tools such as clubs. When you stack melee damage to a high amount with a high quality club, you can knock out almost any creature with ease. A different type of utility can come from the Pachyrhinosaurus. Their second and tertiary attacks are different pheromones. One forces the creature to ignore you, the other to attack you. Pachyrhinos are slower compared to other creatures on this list, but the Rage Pheromone is good for getting the attention of normally skittish creatures. They can also carry a second person on their saddle, which can help make up for their lack of speed. Past those, another creature you could consider is a griffin. While griffins are Ragnarok only, they're able to fly, carry a passenger, and are fairly quick, especially in a dive. Finally, a mount for water taming is the Ichthyosaurus. When their speed is upgraded, they're faster than any other water creature, they're easy to tame, and you're able to use weapons from their back. And that's the different ways you can prepare for knocking out a creature. Immobilization is great for taming a creature on the fly, but is only really effective against smaller creatures. Traps are good for any non-tiny creature, but they require a bit of preparation, but are the most safe option. Tanking the hits with a good mount is probably the most flexible but risky option, and you could combine it with either immobilization or traps to great effect. The next stage of taming a creature is actually knocking it out. I'll talk about the different weapons and their effects while trying to knock a creature out. First off, I need to say to knock out a creature you need to max out its topor meter. To do this, you need weapons that deal topor damage. Topor damage is influenced by weapon type and weapon damage percentage from increased item quality. That being said, the numbers I have here are approximate and should be taken as broad comparisons of weapons and ammo. The first weapon that you will come across that deals topor damage is the club. The club deals four times the damage dealt in topor damage, and that amount is influenced by both weapon damage percentage and your damage percent stat. This is a risky weapon to use on more dangerous creatures because it puts you in range of creatures' attacks, but it is very useful in early game. A 100% damage club with no points into the damage stat will deal 20 topor damage. The slingshot comes shortly after the club. The slingshot deals one and a third times damage dealt in Toe 4. 
While that multiplier is lower than the club, it does deal about the same to a core damage at 100% weapon damage. The slingshot is preferable to the club because of the range advantage it gives you. It will be quite a while before you have access to Trank Arrows, but they will be superior to the Slingshot in terms of Topor. They will deal double the damage in Topor damage, plus 2.5 times the damage over 4 seconds. With 100% weapon power bow, this will be approximately 90 Topor per arrow. Shortly after you get the Trank Arrow, the crossbow becomes available. A 100% crossbow deals approximately 160 Topor damage total per Trank Arrow. The next jump in tranking technology doesn't come until level 62 with Tranquilizer Darts. Trank Darts deal 6 times damage dealt in Topor damage, plus 2.5 times the damage dealt over 5 seconds. A 100% weapon damage long neck rifle will deal approximately 220 total Topor damage per dart. The last stage of Tranks doesn't come until level 96 with Shocking Tranquilizer Darts. These darts deal 12 times the damage dealt in Topor damage instantly, with 5 times the damage dealt in Topor damage over 5 seconds. With the 100% weapon damage long neck rifle, this will be approximately 440 total Topor damage per dart. There are a couple of extra Trank items that fall outside of this progression. The first is the Boomerang. Introduced in Scorched Earth and obtained between the Slingshot and Trank Arrows, the Boomerang can either deal melee damage or thrown damage. As far as I can tell, it deals a static damage of 42 Topor damage on melee and 70 Topor damage upon being thrown. The Trank Spear is an underwater only weapon that is shot from a harpoon launcher. They deal 6 times damage dealt in Topor damage, plus 2.5 times the damage dealt in Topor damage over 5 seconds. A 100% harpoon launcher will deal approximately 300 total Topor damage. An electric prod inflicts a massive amount of Topor damage on a single melee hit before it needs to be recharged. The only thing that will increase the amount of Topor damage dealt by the electric prod is an increased weapon quality. A 100% weapon damage electric prod will deal approximately 270 Topor damage. There are also several creatures that can deal Topor damage, however most of them are not as effective as using the other tools at your disposal, but that being said, the best options you have are Scorpions, Mantis, and Thorny Dragons. The Scorpion's primary attack deals 3 times the damage dealt in Topor damage over 10 seconds, and it can stack twice. To make a Scorpion good for knocking creatures out, you need to increase the health and melee damage. You need to be careful raising the melee damage too high because you start to run the risk of killing a creature before you knock it out. Mantis are great when you equip them with a high quality club. If you stack melee damage and health and equip a high weapon damage percentage club, you can knock out a variety of creatures. This is another situation where you have to be careful with the melee damage, else you will kill the creature you're trying to tame. And the Thorny Dragon's secondary attack is a projectile thrown from the tail that deals 4 times the damage dealt in Topor damage, plus 1.5 times the damage dealt in Topor damage over 5 seconds. Again, stack melee damage and health to make it more suited to knocking out other creatures. Just remember not to go overboard on the melee damage, else you will kill the creature before you knock it out. There are others, but I feel these three are going to be the most effective in trying to knock other creatures out. Once you have used your Topor tool of choice to knock out the creature you want to tame, the next thing you'll need to know is Topor management. The simplest and earliest method of keeping a creature knocked out is Narco Berries. You can gather them uncommonly from bushes. Narco Berries give this creature 7.5 points of Topor over 3 seconds. If you're on Aberration, Acerbic Mushrooms replace Narco Berries, and they're much more effective, giving the creature 25 points of Topor over 2 seconds. They can be gathered from any mushroom pile. The next and most common Topor management item you will use is the Narcotic. They're made at a mortar and pestle with spoiled meat and narco berries or acerbic mushrooms. 
Narcotics give 40 Topor to the creature over 8 seconds. This is going to be the primary item you use for Topor management. The next one doesn't come up until you can kill the Nidaria. These creatures are mostly found deep in the ocean and will drop Biotoxin. Biotoxin will give the creatures you feed it to 80 Topor over 16 seconds. I would recommend using Biotoxin to craft the Shocking Tranquilizer darts since the amount of Topor given is comparable to narcotics. If you have nothing else, you can hit the creature again with your Topor inducing weapon. However, this decreases your taming effectiveness, so it's not the preferred method. You can also decrease the amount of Topor. This is normally not desirable, but there are reasons to do so, but I'm not going to discuss them here. The first way you'll come across is stem berries. You'll gather these uncommonly from bushes, and they will remove 10 points of Topor. Combining stem berries with spark powder and a mortar and pestle gives you stimulant, which removes 40 points of Topor. Now that you know how to knock a creature out and how to keep it down, next you'll want to be able to defend it. If you're playing with vanilla settings, you'll need to be prepared to defend the creature you're taming anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to 3 to 4 hours or even more if you're not prepared with the right food. More on that in a bit. You're going to need some way to keep carnivores from getting at your creature. The simplest approach is to surround the creature with a bunch of spike walls or metal spike walls if you feel the need for better protection. You could also put down fence foundations and walls on top of them, which will keep curious critters out. Or you can combine the two methods to have a better chance of keeping things away. If you built a trap, you'll notice you already have walls. You just need spikes and you'll be better protected. But remember to always stay vigilant. If you see something that could ruin your tame, kill it or knock it out. If you can't do that, it might be time to ditch your tame. Now it's time to talk about which food to use. I can't talk specifics in such a general video, but I can give you a broad enough overview that you won't get caught completely unaware. In general, kibble is always going to be the best food you can give a creature. There are exceptions to this, mainly creatures not having a preferred kibble. Using the wrong kibble is worse than using regular food, so keep that in mind when planning out a tame. Kibble is made from a specific combination of an egg and two other ingredients, typically a vegetable and a meat. Again, there are exceptions to this, and it would be a good idea to look up the recipe instead of trying to guess it. I'll include a link in the description for more detail. Carnivores have a variety of different meats that can be fed to them, in no particular order, meat, fish meat, raw prime meat, raw prime fish meat, raw mutton, and all of their cooked variants. In general, creatures prefer the raw versions of the meat to the cooked ones. Raw mutton is typically the best meat to use, followed by raw prime meat. Fish meat and raw prime fish meat are very rarely good for taming. The list for herbivores is much shorter. After their preferred kibble, they prefer vegetables, and then mijo berries, and then all other berries. I must note here that there are exceptions and some herbivores will prefer a certain type of vegetable over the others, and some might even like sweet vegetable cakes over everything else. Just in general, feed raw prime meat to carnivores and vegetables to herbivores. Some don't fit this mold, but it's a good place to start. So now that you've got the creature knocked out, a way to keep it knocked out, protected, and fed, now all that's left is to wait. While you're waiting, there are a few things on the taming interface that should interest you. There's a yellow bar, a purple bar, and a seemingly random percentage. The yellow bar is your taming progress bar. This bar will only fill when the creature's food meter drops low enough for them to eat a food item from its inventory. It won't fill when the creature is force-fed, and it will go down if there's no food in the creature's inventory, and will completely reset if the creature wakes up. The purple bar tells you the percentage of topor remaining, or how long until the creature regains consciousness. It's a great way to quickly monitor the topor without having to open the creature's inventory. The last bit is the taming effectiveness percentage. In the early game, this isn't something that's quite as important as getting the creature tamed, but the number at the end of taming determines the amount of total bonus levels the creature gains. The taming effectiveness goes down each time the creature eats or gets hit. 
Better quality foods fill the taming percentage bar quicker, which means the creature eats less, which means the taming effectiveness is higher when taming is finished, which means more bonus levels. Once you're done waiting, for however long you need to wait, you're done, you're finished, that's it. If this video was helpful, make sure you like and share it. Your support really helps out the channel. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and have yourselves a very good day.